With the release of AMD's new graphics architecture in RDNA, AMD brought back the fight in the mid-range segment, but along with the usual race of neck-and-neck -neck advances, AMD also released some software and API updates in their open GPU initiative. Under the banner of Fidelity FX, an open source tool for adding in post-processing into game engines, AMD also added in direct driver support for a form of post-process image sharpening called Radeon Image Sharpening, or RIS. Due to a lack of time among other things, until now we have not spent too much time to cover this driver enhancement, or the technology itself, but the time has come. So what are we looking at here with Radeon Image Sharpening? The methodology is super simple. Image sharpening in general seeks out edges in an image and increases their contrast. For example, here's our trusty digital foundry logo, obscured with the tiniest bit of Gaussian blur, 5 pixel width here. The lines of the edge of the text and the logo itself have a soft fall off, going from stark black and slowly fading from grey and going into white. By applying a basic image sharpening through Adobe Photoshop, in a power of 2.5 you can see how this full image sharpening brings back pristine lines onto the edges, eliminating that soft fall off. Now here's that same DF logo, but without any Gaussian blur applied to it. The image in its original form before any manipulation. If you compare the sharpened image to that original, you can see how the sharpening over softened detailed can bring out the original shapes hidden by unsharpening blurs. Not bad. Detail has been reclaimed to a degree, but at the same time as it can do that, you can also see some artifacts or errors it brings into the image. The original DF logo also has some hidden, tiny diffuse light blue colored spots in the background above the logo, incredibly faint on purpose. Since the image sharpening is applied to the entire image here, small details like these little blue dots are overemphasized, and that enhanced contrast from sharpening alters their color actually, making them far more contrasted with the background than they should be. This is an undesired artifact. They now look darker. If you take and add even more sharpening, you can see how rings start forming around contrasted edges. The image details are now over sharpened. While this looks dramatic here and not too great, this is a common problem in image post-processing with sharpening. If you take a look at another image from a popular video game, for example, you can see how applying full image sharpening can enhance the contrast on low contrast regions, making the details darker. But then you can also see how uniformly applying sharpening leaves already contrasted edges with too much contrast. And then this ringed edged look starts to form. This is exactly what Radeon image sharpening looks to avoid. By evaluating the image's edges for their local contrast, it can smartly apply the sharpening effect to areas that lack local contrast, like the inner surface of a flat texture. It conversely then avoids applying sharpening to those areas that already showcase greater local contrast, or that is what it at least ideally tries to do. RIS aims to add sharpness to an image without adding in typical artifacts of image sharpening. It attempts to avoid oversharpening. Cool, but that's all academic, why should you care? The thing is, since multi-sample anti-aliasing and super-sample anti-aliasing images became overly complex or overly expensive on the GPU, developers have switched over to post-process or temporal anti-aliasing methods. While these offer cheap performance and reasonable image quality, they have the tendency to over-apply themselves. They can over-average certain pixels on the screen, leading to a softer look. This is especially important on the inner surface of textures, where a game's TAA might over-average its results, softening the apparent look of that texture. Now this can be mitigated in certain ways by changing the way how TAA works, such as modifications made to filmic SMAA in the Call of Duty games. Or games can offer internal image sharpening after TAA, like how the Frostbite games apply sharpening to its TAA automatically without any user control, or games can offer post-TAA sharpening with user control, like Gears 5 recently has. But not every game or dev does this, and even if a game does have sharpening, it could be of the quote-unquote dumb variety, which is more prone to artifacting. So Radeon image sharpening can be applied regardless to many games to help solve the problem of TAA softening for inner surface detail. As enabled through the driver, RIS would then apply 
after the game has been rendered. And yes, that means over game menus and the game HUD, much like Reshade can do as I've covered in the past. But there are some caveats at the moment. According to the driver release notes, RIS only works in DX12, Vulkan, and DX9 titles on RDNA chips, so no DX11. And the recently supported Polaris graphics cards like the AMD RX 580 that I'm using only work under DX12 and Vulkan. This is a big shame actually, as I was looking forward to demo the difference this sharpening can make in some of the big name Offender DX11 titles, like Final Fantasy XV with its extremely soft TAA. Oh, and if you have a Vega card, you're completely out of luck at the moment, as RIS is not enabled at all for those GPUs. So let's take a look at a game where its application makes the most sense. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. On release, this game had a notoriously soft TAA, which at lower resolutions like 1080p would soften much of the inner surface texture detail. Compared to the AA being set to off, you can see how TAA may make edges look smooth, but it smooths over a lot of the texture detail as well. The game did have an internal sharpening option, but it functioned like a dumb, very high strength uniform image sharpening. Not that great looking. It added in a lot of black edges, increased image aliasing in motion, and generally did not look too great. Thankfully, this game has a DirectX 12 client and is a perfect candidate for RIS. As you can see, versus the standard in-game sharpening, RIS aids in recovering a lot of inner surface texture detail, but it is not overly strong for a lot of the higher contrast edges. It prevents that outlined look that the in-game sharpening filter has. Take a look here at this lampshade, for example. The edge with standard in-game sharpening is far too ringed looking and cartoony almost. RIS leaves it primarily alone, but then manages to reclaim inner surface texture detail lost with TAA. This is a pretty great show for RIS and is its primary use case. There's little to no performance cost at 1080p on an RX 580, but not everything is perfect of course. It is applied after the game has been rendered, which unfortunately means it applies to the HUD and menus. Like here, how you can see the Deus Ex logo has added sharpening to it. Also, since it is done after the rendering, the game also has an untoggleable film grain. Adding in sharpening over the entire game makes that film grain have a much starker contrast than it should. It's not a huge difference, but it's something to note, and something all injected sharpening filters will generally have, like those through Reshade. The sharpening needs to be native in-game before other post-processing to avoid such artifacts. This is the generally positive behavior and outcome that can be expected across all supported games and all supported APIs depending upon your AMD hardware. You should expect to see inner surface detail softened by post-process anti-aliasing be reclaimed to a certain degree by RIS, though that does technically mean a bit more aliasing, as increasing contrast without increasing pixel density means you increase the chance for aliasing to occur. That's just how it works and it comes with the territory. This is where I have to make a slight point regarding how RIS should possibly be discussed and how it is best utilized. RIS is a post-process image filter. It works within the pixel grid already existing, such as 1080p, and it reclaims softened detail from other post-processes. But it cannot go beyond that initial rendering resolution. It cannot generate new detail, for example, into a denser pixel grid it is not reconstructing higher resolution images. This is really well pointed out in AMD's own materials describing the technique. In an example out of Strange Brigade, AMD shows the standard TAA at a low resolution. Then it shows that standard lower resolution TAA with RIS applied. And then that same location again with 4K and TAA. While it is possible to see what looks like more apparent detail added into the image with RIS on a flat textured area, that is phenomenologically different than shading in new pixels in a higher density grid to achieve more detail. If you were to, for example, compare that 4K image, you can see what I mean. The features reclaimed by RIS have a different pixel size. They adhere to that lower image resolution. Switch over to the 4K output of that texture, and you can see how the texture resolves differently and now showcases smaller pixel detail. If this image were in motion, that inner surface detail in the 4K image would be more stable, while the RIS one would probably show more apparent aliasing. If you were to go over to an aliased edge, what I am saying here becomes much more clear. 
RIS can help reclaim more detail lost by TAA, but it does not make the image of a higher resolution. This edge here, for example, looks just as aliased with or without RIS, while 4K makes the pixel edges smaller and therefore it shows less apparent aliasing. So RIS has its uses, but it is not akin to rendering the game at a higher resolution or it is not akin to attempting to reconstruct a game to a higher resolution. For me, I think RIS's best application is when it is a part of a direct integration in a game engine itself. So it avoids all those problems like sharpening things that it should not, such as the HUD. Something which the recent release of Borderlands 3 has shown off very well. In side-by-side -side images from Borderlands 3, it is easy to see how fidelity affects sharpening as a toggleable option in the game has a nice effect on inner surface detail, making it starker in comparison to the plain old TAA image. So yeah, a nice new optional tool in the box for AMD users if it plays well with the game's HUD and other post-processing. It's also a great resource for developers who can use it to add in a very competent type of image sharpening into their game through AMD having open sourced it. If anything though, I do hope that AMD offers a slider to control its strength or a slider controlling its threshold for application so users have more choice in the driver. Oh, and I hope that Vega and DirectX 11 support are on the way. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this small little video explaining image sharpening and how it specifically works with Radeon image sharpening. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then please hit that little bell button in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to me about image sharpening or post-processing like this in general, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen.